Hey everybody, welcome back to Carpo's channel. So let's be honest for a minute here, or try to. If you have an, a political opinion online and you put it out there, or you talk about something that others don't agree with, or others might look at you funny, it's usually only maybe half the population at most that are really bothered. Well, you know, this varies according to the subject matter. But it seems that when we talk about mental health, a lot of people are afraid to speak out, and with good reason. For me to sit here in front of the camera and tell you about my own mental problems, it really puts me on a spit roasting over a fire if I ever want to get a career, a job, or, you know, you have an employer that comes across your video and says, oh my god, this guy's fucked up. Fortunately, I feel like I have my own head together enough to where I can talk about these things and uh, not feel like an outcast or feel like it's impeding my, my ability to live my life, right? However, I think these need to be addressed because I've met a lot of people who have very similar mental issues. And um, let's just get right into it. I mean, I have ADD, OCD, CIA, DEA. No, I'm kidding. I really, I, I find a lot of these terms to be a complete joke. Um, there are what you would call a sliding scale. It, it's similar to when people talk about um, people who have Asperger's, for example. You know, Asperger's is supposed to be a mild form of... Um, uh, I can't think of the term right now. I don't have notes in front of me or anything. The point being that it's it's considered a scale, a sliding scale, where some people have it mild and some people have it more severe. These are all just labels that are given by, you know, scientists writing the DSM-5, which is the book of diagnostics to figure out what a person has. The human brain is extremely complicated. To try to pin it down to a person has a certain condition is ridiculous most of the time. So when you talk about OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, it can mean many things. Now look, when I was younger, I used to step on, over rather, the cracks on the sidewalk. And if I did step on a crack, I'd have to step on another crack with the other foot. But not just with the other foot, with the other foot in the exact same place. Now, as I'm saying this, I know a lot of you are saying, ha ha, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, if I touched a rail or bumped a wall with one hand, I'd bump it with the other. This went on from my teen, all the way through my teenage years, during my, my acne and stress-filled teenage years. <laughs> but it seemed to diminish or switch uh, later on. I had uh, a nervous habit of licking my lips. I'll never forget when my best friend started calling me Lipstick Man. Thanks, Mike. Um, <laughs> and when you're in, like, eighth grade, that's pretty, uh, you know, if you're like, God damn it, dude. Uh, you don't want to be picked on. So, anyhow, I also had a habit where I used to do this. I would stretch my jaw and my lips out really far. Now, all of these were little nervous habits I'd have through a period of time. And then it would be something else and it would be something else. For a period of years, I used to do this. I would nod my head. It probably drove my wife insane, because during the early part of our relationship, it was fairly common that I did that. <laughs> it wasn't until about five, six years ago, when I was doing research about Tourette's, that I realized that I probably have had and have had a mild form of Tourette's. Now, Tourette's syndrome most people hear that and they think of a person going, fuck shit, and cussing. You know, it's that's not the situation. That is very rare. It's a very small percentage in the single digits, I believe, of people who have that type of Tourette's. Tourette's is an uncontrollable desire to do something, right? A tick is what they call it. A movement or a twitch. Twitch. It doesn't mean that everybody that twitches has Tourette's, especially older people. They can have various neurological issues, Parkinson's and whatnot. But when you've looked at your own tics and habits over time and you compare them to what Tourette's is, I realize that I, ha I do have that. Um, take OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. That could be stepping on the cracks on the sidewalk, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a clean freak. People hear OCD, they think, oh, that guy's OCD. He's always, dude, I'm, I'm not a clean freak. <laughs> I'm the opposite of a clean freak. So um, different habits, different patterns different ticks 
I also had bruxism for most of my life, which is why my teeth got all messed up. I grind my teeth in my sleep and during the day. Now I like to say first that a lot of this, I could say I have ADD, but I don't. I can, I think that ADD is used as an excuse to not listen to anything that people have to say. It's used as an excuse to not focus by a lot of kids, a lot of adults. Um, and I've known people who use ADD as an excuse to not listen to anything you just said for the last five. Sorry, I got ADD. No, that doesn't fly. Um, it's something you learn to pay attention. That's not ADD. I can focus when I'm focused on what I'm focused on. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, um, a lot of this, though, is stress-related. So, a lot of it is self-induced. If you drink too much coffee, you'll also have twitches and habits, and it can very much increase this. So, anybody who has one of these conditions should be aware that drugs can definitely hinder your ability to overcome these things, while other drugs might help you to mask some of the symptoms. It, it's but it's often stress related. Think of it like dreams. I've been having crazy dreams for the last year. I know you have too. A lot of people have. Unless you're one of those people that says, I don't dream, which is nonsense because we all dream. You just don't remember them. If you lay down thinking, I'm going to remember my dreams, and then you lay when you wake up, you will be surprised what you can recall. But dreams can be more intense during times of stress or upheaval or change. Totally expected but so can our nervous habits. Biting our nails, tapping, things like that. I don't bite my nails, fortunately, and I never have, but when I was younger, I used to bite the edges of the cuticles. Um, <laughs> these habits that we have, often we don't realize. I had a friend that ate paper in high school. Um, I had other friends that, um, Let's just say that everybody's got their own weird little tics, twitches, and habits. Nobody wants to talk about that shit. Sometimes these habits turn into things like smoking, drinking, vaping. <laughs> and since so many of these patterns are internal, once we recognize them in ourselves, we don't want to talk about them. The other side of that is that some people want to talk about them because they use them as a scapegoat or an excuse. I've met plenty of people who, whenever they're caught not paying attention, they say they have ADD. Uh, whenever they're not focused, they say they have OCD. Or if they're, you know, there's a difference between cleaning your house and being a neat freak. There's a difference between keeping your nails trimmed and biting them down to nothing. There's a difference between uh, drinking too much coffee and being twitchy and twitching all the time. And people, you got to realize we're just human and we can't put ourselves down. We can't, um, so what this comes to, and this is what I found is often people misdirect these things. They, they misunderstand their own, their own weaknesses, or I shouldn't say weaknesses, because I'd like to finalize by saying that this could actually be a strength, but you have to acknowledge your own shortcomings or things that you, you know, that might be ticks or twitches or habits, but how can you use these to benefit yourself? And that's the most important thing. How do you turn it around and recalibrate yourself to see things as the gold out of lead? It's the true transmutation of, you know, what you would consider bad into thinking of it as a some way to benefit yourself. If you're hyper-focused on certain things, if you're obsessed about things, like I can be, even though I may not be focused on the things that society tells me to, I am focused on certain things. Making art and creating things, making videos and, and podcasts, like how do I turn this into my success, you know? How do I turn my own lack of focus into focus? You see what I'm saying? And I know a lot of folks are suffering from this thing we would call internet fatigue, but also uh, internet, uh, it's, the internet's made us expect everything in short sound bites. It's the same reason I'm still making 20 minute videos after all these years, but hard, you know, most people don't make it even halfway through. Sure, I'm boring as hell to listen to sometimes, I know that, but there's another angle that I found myself, like even a very informative video, I want, I want it condensed, but some things cannot be condensed such as mental health. And so 
when these mental issues turn into physical addictions, that's when it can become a major problem. There's nothing wrong with consuming a couple beers or smoking a few bulls. You know, people are going to do what they're going to do. I find myself putting myself down about why do I take Kratom or smoke cannabis, but then I think, am I ever so wasted that I can't function? Well, I just smoked a bowl and took some Kratom before I made this video. Am I totally uncoherent and stumbling over my words? Oh, hell, I have a beer over here too. Uh, I do my best to be myself and to do my thing that works for me. But society puts this image into our minds that any consumption is bad, any habit is bad. And I only say, won't say addiction because addiction doesn't mean you consume something every day. Addiction means you, you take something continuously despite it causing you negative consequences. So when you're too broke to afford what you're consuming or when your body's breaking down or you don't remember what happened last night, you might have a problem. But having a beer at lunch isn't a big deal. And yeah, it's lunchtime. So that's about all I've got. I don't want to make this too long. I really want to be able to talk to people who feel like they've had mental issues. And I want to let people know, you can email me and I'll do my best to respond to every email that I get in time. Sometimes I get a personal message or email. I know that YouTube used to have you know, personal messages and they got rid of that, but uh, my email's in the description and I, I, I've had emails from people who are having a hard time. It's hard for me to respond sometimes, but I, I do better in text than I do like in person sometimes. It's like I get to think about it and process, but I know some people are having a hard time. I don't have the answers. I just wanted people to know that they're not alone and that we all suffer from anxiety and depression from time to time, that we all have our ups and downs, and that we can decide how we want to proceed in our lives. It's never too late to, you know, recognize that we're imperfect human beings and just do our thing. And, you know, that's all we can do. I have a lot more to be grateful for than bothered by, which is why these things don't really bother me too much. <clears throat> if I get focused on a project, I can get right into it, you know? I'm not completely lost in this world. I have a brain, I have eyeballs, and I have ears, so I have something going for me. And you do too, I'm guessing, since you're listening. So, and watching. So I'll talk to y'all next time. I want to say thank you to my patrons for your support, and a couple new patrons. I don't have the names written down right now, um, but I try to post patrons' names in all of my podcasts, as well as my videos. And if you haven't heard my podcast, I recently did one on COVID. Yesterday I uploaded it. Um, and it's something I wrote out about the situation over the last year. And, you know, thanks for listening. Talk to you later. And remember, <coughs> you're, uh, whatever, whatever issues you might have mentally, if you made it this long in the video, at least you can pay attention and you're a human being. And uh, not, um, that's not an arrogant statement, but rather the fact that you're able to pay attention and listen to what another person says. And maybe you can't converse well in a group. I mean, that's hard for all of us. I just think that it's easy for us to kind of really look down on ourselves and think that we're worse than we are. And I think we're all doing just fine. So, peace out.